Okay, change of plans and I have to actually explain you the first plan for it all to make sense. So the first plan was the following. I got the offer to review the MT5 from Yamaha. And I already always in the past liked Yamaha products in terms of their sounding because after all, I used their AV receivers for about two decades now. Now the problem is that I did not nearly expect to get that what I have here for about $100 or 80 bucks. And what I initially planned was just to review them. But once I've actually used them, I was absolutely blown away. And I really mean it. And that's why I will make this review in just one take, because I think I can't, if I try this in a different few more takes, put all my emotions and all my feelings and all what I have felt of this headphone if I tried once again. So I could be a little bit confused, a little bit rambling on because I will talk a little bit more about it than I usually have to because I just have to kind of translate over the screen what I think of it because like I said, the first plan was to review it, but once I used it for a little bit, I was blown away. And when I say blown away, I don't mean this on a $100 spectrum. I mean this on something way higher. But what I wanted to do next is review the top of the line of this one, the MT8. I actually planned to make a comparison between those two, but I planned or the, the, the plan was that I will get them maybe like a Monday or Tuesday. So I would have had like two or three more days for the review. But they arrived already today, the MT8, which you actually can see. And since I can't wait to try them, I have to kind of get this review done first because what I actually decided on later, and that's the change of plans, to not even unbox them, to not to temper what I think of the MT5 first. So I will make a comparison with the MT5 and also my current, at least it maybe still is or maybe was my current reference, the Sennheiser HD 600s that costs about at least three times of these. And that already shows quite a lot how much I think of these. But like I said, I don't want to temper my huge amazing impressions of this one before I try this because it could maybe water down what I think if these actually manage to be way even better because like I said $100 the MT8 cost about $200 or 180 euros which is about double but if they improve on the pretty much non-existent flaws or just already great specs and even improve that I think it would be worth it I don't know yet you will have to see that in the review of the MT8 or the comparison, but for now, let's get finally into these. And in terms of design, nothing to complain. They look quite, I would say, understated, but definitely very nice. The padding here definitely isn't all that thick, but it doesn't have to be. Leather, I, I don't think it's real leather. I think it's something like pleather. And as, as you can already see, you can actually fold them up. And there is a case that you get with, and I don't have that, but it's nothing really spectacular. But I actually have to say that this... Folding mechanism is something that I don't want because every time I put them off my head kind of like this happens that I don't even want because I just want to use them on my uh, and my on my headphone rest but that is definitely something that doesn't bother me really of of course one thing that I also want to show off that I would have wished for a clicky change of size because as you can see it's seamless I would have definitely wished for that because I'm someone who's very OCD <laughs> and I want to have the same size on both sides which is quite hard to get but let's just forget that build quality also very fine they flex as you can see very well so I, I think they will be very very sturdy we get also three meter long cable and in this price range something that i did not expect twist and lock so you can easily replace that without any issues definitely a nice secure mechanism the cable is totally of fine quality it comes with 3.5 millimeters and with the bigger one the adapter that can be screwed on definitely very nice now about the ear cups what do i have to say about these first of all i'm not usually a fan of let's say rectangular outcuts but this is still good enough because the most important thing is it's big enough so my ears don't touch about the thickness and of the softness of the cushion i have to say the following it's not really super soft but since it's not very thick this is actually okay because i definitely prefer a little bit thinner and therefore harder because my ears don't touch which sometimes happens on my right ear because if this would have been softer maybe more comfortable i would have touched my ears so i rather prefer just not to touch it and therefore a little bit of a maybe less comfort design but otherwise it is fine and especially the size works out okay okay so if i put them on which is actually the wrong way around 
and uh, this folding is a little bit annoying because it happens so many times on accident. Now, what about the isolation frost? Since it is a closed bag, I have to say the isolation is moderate, absolutely fine, in line with pretty much. I don't really notice a big difference of isolation and in terms of leakage, they are also very fine. Now, in terms of pressure, I definitely would not say it's too much. You definitely notice it because it is quite strong on it, but it, I would say it's totally fine. Then, like I said, the fit is actually very good because they don't move at all. I think it's just because of the shape or so, and actually they look decent on your head, but I never really felt like they would move or so around. You need a little bit of some time to adjust them properly, especially with the headband that doesn't have this clicky setting. And once that is done, I would say I won't really give it much more in terms of comfort than maybe a good, because it's okay. Something like the Sennheiser HD definitely feel very more comfortable, and since it's leather, or at least maybe fake leather, it will get a little bit warm. I didn't have too much of an issue. I've ha already had leather ear cups that were way hotter. Maybe it's due to the shape. I don't know how they actually mentioned, but it's totally bearable for even a longer period of time. And I've used this for hours and hours and they never really felt like it would be hard to have them on. Because the great thing is actually they weigh just 245 grams, where the MT8 actually weigh 100 grams more. And I'm really excited to see how big the difference will be because those don't feel heavy at all. And that's why I said also that the cushioning here doesn't have to be very thick because the weight gets pretty much hold on just from the pressure here. And yeah, this is all fine. Now let's talk about the sound. And this will be very hard for me to properly explain to you of how good they are. Because from the very first moment when I had them, after all, it is called out as a studio monitor and usually studio monitors in my opinion are something more boring but not on the not the case here because they are very very neutral but not in the boring kind of way because you you have just pretty much everything in one line the bass nice precise definitely not super deep because it's just not emphasizing on that same goes for the highs they are not harsh, but they are definitely there. They are very detailed, very open. And even though this is a closed back, I'm actually happy because I don't like the a too big of a sound set. So I would say it's a medium sized stage, which is exactly what I like to. I don't like big sound sets and the overall sound feels so lightweight, so easy, so, so full of details and the mids. They absolutely nailed it with those mids because I like to have my vocals, if then, to be a little bit in front of the music, which is exactly the thing here. So not that they push them more forwards, but I would say just a tad in front of the instrument, which is exactly what I want. And the bass, now the bass, like I said, isn't emphasizing, but if the track actually needs it to be there, it is absolutely there. So if you listen to some things like maybe pop music and also dubstep and so on, of course it won't blow your ears away, but you will definitely have more bass than on some other tracks where you just don't need so much bass. So I would say, I don't know how they actually managed to do that, but whenever you need bass, it is there and just that much that you need, not more or not less, which is exactly, and something so hard to manage because the Sennheiser HD 600s have the exact same issue though, because they have bass, but some tracks where I think it would be good if they would have a little bit more bass, there it's lacking. Here for some reason, it's not the case. And this is so great, the highs, for a few people that definitely know more of a mainstream sounding, they could sound a little bit too harsh, but what I think they are doing is just not filtering out everything, giving you exactly what's there. And that's why I definitely could easily recommend them for monitoring, but that's not what I would use them for because they are almost just too good for them because the sound is so nice and the overall balance is just pretty much perfect. I, re I really don't know what you could improve on that. And that's why I just needed to make this review before trying the MT8 because I have no idea what they could possibly do better. Yes, the comfort and so on. That, that's things that they definitely can do better because they have like proper leather instead of this pleather. So comfort wise, maybe the MT8 could better, but I, I really don't know what because I will get a little bit more in depth in that in the comparison of them with the HS600 because 
I switch back and forth with the HD600 to see how they are different. And I have to say that what I said in my HD600 review, that everything that I didn't like so much on the HD600 and where I wanted them to be actually closer to the 650s, because I said my sweet spot would be somewhere in between the 650 and the 600, a little bit closer to the 600, because I definitely like that neutrality. Of course, it's an open back headphone and offers amazing details and clarity. But for a closed back one, this has pretty much just about that. But what it has is the little bit base that I would like to get from the HS600 and a little bit off of the sharpness because I noticed that if I listen to some tracks a little bit louder on the HS600, it can be a little bit fatiguing, which is not the case here because they are just so much about that level where it could be too harsh, but without sacrificing because many headphones, they take a little bit off from the high end to not to fatigue you, something like, for example, the Ultra Zone do, but then you lose some details. You never lose anything. You get pretty much everything that is there, and that's so great. And yes, it's $100, but I have to actually say, if I would have to choose overall, mostly just because in terms of sound, I would choose them. That's already kind of a spoiler. These over the HD600, because they are pretty much the perfect missing link between the 650 and the 600. Yes, I know you can't really properly com compare a closed one with an open back, but just all the time forth and back, these sounded like the HD600 taken up a notch in terms of refining it. And that's... That's something that I will get a little bit more into in the comparison with the MT8. So for right now, let's quickly summarize this. For 100, build quality is fine. The design is fine. What you get in is okay. You get the back, you get the back, you get the cable, you get the adapter, you get the headphone. All is fine. Like I said, the comfort is the one thing that could be better because it's just about good. It's not like it's uncomfortable or so, but fit is fine. Comfort is fine, so all is fine, not a deal breaker, but it is the sound. And once again, for $100. And if I would not know any better, and if I would just have them here without knowing in what kind of leak they are, and then comparing them with my HD 600s, I would, if I wouldn't consider, of course, the build quality, because it doesn't feel like a free $400 headphone in terms of build quality, but I would say sound-wise, free $400 without even blinking twice, absolutely. And I don't think I have to actually say this, but yes, I can highly, highly recommend it. Maybe if you aren't sure, if you should maybe spend a little bit more, wait for my review of the MT8, if they can manage to do that. And like I said, I will just record this take and also the German one. And I'm not going to even edit it because I have to unbox these to know how good they are. But for now, this would have been, if you have any further questions, like I said, I don't think you will find anything better because I didn't really review many headphones at around 100, either a little bit lower or actually a little bit higher. But just from what I know, from my experience over a long time and so on, and just knowing how accurate they sound without sounding boring at all, like for example, the Audio Technica M50s do, these do such a phenomenal job. But I have to just point out one thing. If you are more of a mainstream listener who wants more bass or who wants like a V-shape or anything like that, this is not it. This is for someone who wants something definitely more audiophile, who wants maybe a studio monitor, who wants something neutral, linear, but not on a boring side because it is just balanced and sounded at least pretty much perfectly from what I know now. Because of course I haven't really reviewed any headphones at 500,000 and maybe at some point this will happen. So I'm still at a lower level, but this is the price range where most people are still checking for headphones. And most people ask me, what's the best headphone at around 100 or 150 and so on. And for 100, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything that comes close because I definitely like what, for example, the HyperX Cloud 2 are doing. And I've always said that they have a very nice soundstage for music and so on, but still definitely way too much V-shaped or sounded, which is nice for some things. But if you want something accurate, linear, but enjoy the hell out of music. These are so wonderful. Okay, let's just cut this off because I could ramble on and on for like at least half an hour longer, but I just don't want to bore you any longer. If you've enjoyed this review, thumbs up, subscription, leave me anything down there below what you think. Otherwise, have a nice day. Bye.